Edexcel Corpio, Hyperbolic Functions 1, an introduction. Hyperbolic Function Identities. We have previously seen that tanx x can be defined as shine x over cosh x. So that's the first of your identities to be learned. And it's true for all values of x. But now we're going to look at what happens if we look at some different potential identities and see how they behave. For example, cos squared x minus shine squared x. And before we start, notice the minus sign. So we're going to look at cos squared minus shine squared. And again, using my standard definitions. So there's cos x squared minus shine x squared, which we've seen before. So I'm going to pull out a quarter as a con factor as I expand these brackets. So we're going to get e to the 2x. Be careful with this middle term. e to the x times e to the minus x is 1, and it will occur twice in the expansion of the brackets, plus e to the minus 2x, minus, again, just pulling out the quarter, e to the 2x. There'll be a minus 2 in the middle of this expansion, plus e to the minus 2x. And if we keep the quarter and expand the brackets and collect like terms, there's an e to the 2x and a minus e to the 2x. There's an e to the minus 2x and a minus e to the minus 2x. And all we're left with is 2 minus minus 2. So we end up with 4 divided by 4, which is 1. So we prove that cosh squared x minus shine squared x is identical to 1. And again, you could start to learn and derive these new identities. It's worth pointing out now that it's extremely important that although hyperbolic functions have many things in common with trigonometric functions, they don't behave in exactly the same way. So you mustn't confuse this with cos squared x plus sine squared x is 1. We can see that there is clearly a difference. So when you are deriving these new hyperbolic identities, keep an eye out for which ones differ. And you probably find or notice that when there's a product of shines like we have here, shine squared x, that's where they differ. And that is known as Osborne's rule. So just be aware when you are deriving or learning the, all these new hyperbolic identities that w wherever there's a product of shines, and that includes tanj times tanj, that there will be a change of sign from the more traditional trigonometric identities. So using these definitions again, of cosh and shine has allowed us to express the cosh squared x minus shine squared x in a more familiar exponential form until we eventually ended up with one. Notice the sign change from the trig identity cos squared plus sine squared is one. So we have our definitions of tanj x and cosh squared minus shine squared is one. There are many other identities which are well worth deriving and um, learning as you are going along. So now we're going to see if we can de derive another hyperbolic identity which is cosh 2x is cosh squared plus shine squared. So I'm going to start off with the right hand side. So I'm going to start off with cosh squared x plus shine squared x using my standard definitions. e to the x plus e to the minus x over 2 squared and with this time we're adding on e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2 squared. We've got a con factor of a quarter which I'm going to pull out of the whole thing and when I expand the brackets I get an e to the 2x, there'll be a 2 in the middle of this expansion, the first expansion, e to the minus 2x. Moving on to the second expansion e to the 2x minus 2 plus e to the minus 2x. And we can see here 
that the 2 and the minus 2 cancel out and when we collect like terms there are 2 e to the 2 x's and there are 2 e to the minus 2 x's and when I simplify this down we get e to the 2 x plus e to the minus 2 x over 2 which is of course the standard definition of cosh of 2x which is the left hand side. Again a good example of Osborne's rule there if we think about the trigonometric equivalent of cos 2 theta is cos squared theta minus sine squared theta we can see there's clearly a difference in sine and that's because of the product of shine x times shine x. So there's a good example of Osborne's rule. So keep an eye out for Osborne's rule when you are learning and deriving these new identities. The other tiny detail is I would try not to refer to this as a double angle identity. X is not an angle. So I would tend to call this, um, just call it the, a double identity. I try not to call it a double angle identity. So just call it one of the double identities. We can now use these hyperbolic identities to solve equations like 3 cos squared x minus 5 shine x equals 1. And a good rule of thumb when faced with these problems is to ask yourself what would you do in a similar situation if it was a trigonometric equation. And I hope the thing that would jump out here is that we've got shine x but we've got cos squared x. So it's the cos squared x which needs to rewrite him. So what identity can I apply to cos squared x? Well, we've shown that cos squared x is 1 plus shine squared x. And suddenly it's all starting to make a little bit more sense. And with a bit of rearranging, we can get a quadratic in shine x. So we've got 3 shine squared x minus 5 shine x. Plus 2 is 0. And um, this particular one will factorize. So we've got 3 shine x minus 2 times shine x minus 1. So we're down to shine x could be 2 thirds, or shine x could be 1. Now we could solve both of these. Um, using our standard definitions of shine as we saw in the previous video we will also be able to solve both of these using the inverse hyperbolic functions which we're going to look at in later videos so for now you could also investigate solving them using your calculator but for now we're just going to take the solutions as x equals 0.625 and x equals 0.881 but you can verify that these are the correct solutions by formally solving each of these equations as you've seen previously. So the thing to watch out for here is again ask yourself what would I do if this was a trigonometric problem and I would focus on this term and find a suitable identity in terms of shine x in order to create this quadratic equation here. The step for solving this for x at the end can be done on a calculator or using your definitions of shine x and looking at inverse hyperbolic functions. In the next session we're going to be looking at differentiating and integrating hyperbolic functions.